Now, before we get into what I just showed, I know that KCCR, where you are, has um, a backlog of some 1,800 and 1,980 uh, cases you are yet to declare on. Is there any plan to clear this backlog that you have? Yes, Alfred, good evening and uh, good evening to your viewers. I indeed, uh, we have um, a few backlogs to, to clear and the plan is to at least uh, finish all of them as soon as practicable so that we can all have uh, or be having a um, real-time result um, displayed on the on the website. So we have given ourselves up to Wednesday thereabouts. Uh, that's tomorrow, um, by close of work, hopefully. Um, the, the interesting thing is that we are very small in terms of um, numbers. And remember, all, all along we have been testing samples from 11 regions, 11 regions. So uh, 11 good regions um, across the countries. So Ashanti region and all the other um, the other parts up 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 north. I mean, sometimes you even receive samples from some parts of the central region as well as some parts of the of the western region. Um, we are few. We have very few numbers. We are we close to 41 people doing the test. We run shifts, so we are putting in our best. Then hopefully. Uh, by close of work tomorrow, early Thursday morning, we should um, have been able to clear the same, this thing known as backlog. Absolutely, and that, that's something good to know. And that thing known as backlog is something maybe we, we will look at when you clear it, because we need to understand whether we're having new cases and whether all of this, the 2,719, represent a backlog of the but, cases, but or is it new? Maybe even before before that, we also need to realize that uh, we are not only testing backlogs, but then we also test samples from hospitals. So if, for example, in a day we receive like um, 50 samples from, from hospitals, then we don't count it as a backlog, but True. then we still end up um, testing testing such samples. I see. I, I'm going to hold you on a bit because uh, I want to zoom in into the greater Accra region because uh, we, I mean, this region where we are accounts for almost over 80%, I think, of the total cases that we've recorded. But the head of virology at Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, Professor William Ampofo, has disclosed that all backlogs of samples have been cleared as a Tuesday May 5th, at the news conference in Accra, he further revealed that the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research is leveled with just about 1,982, as I said earlier. Just take a look at this. Some of the concerns raised by many in Ghana's testing regime and fight against the coronavirus had been the inability to get results on time due to the number of testing centers. The backlog of samples to be tested was also of grave concern. Professor William Ampofu is head of virology at the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research. Uh, with regards to the backlog, so I just cross-checked with uh, Professor Richard Phillips of KCCR, and he has 1,982 samples awaiting testing. Um, it was 3,500 yesterday, so they worked all night. and. Um, he expects that by Thursday, the backlog will be done. Um, for Noguchi, we have no backlog. He revealed that plans are far advanced to ensure a lot more centers are equipped to do more testing. A week ago, the KNUST and INCAS Diagnostics created a rapid diagnostic test RDT kit to help test for the novel coronavirus. Professor William Ampoff says the kits which were sent to the Food and Drugs Authority has been forwarded to Noguchi for evaluation and a report will be sent back to the FDA in the coming days. That, that was just to give you more detail what I mentioned earlier with Casey Sierra's backlog. But Dr. Zervakin, so the Greater Accra region has about 2,382, I think, cases out of the 2,719. For you as a virologist, what does this figure communicate to you? Um, indeed. So it means that in, in the greater Accra region of Ghana, um, they are accounting for like 86% uh, of the total confirmed um, cases. And um, 
of this is this is this is definitely worrying and i keep on telling my friends in in this region that look if you really don't have anything to do it's it's good you stay at home and if you really even need to move out of your home then it behoves on you to wear a nose mask. I mean, the required um, type of, of nose mask. Um, but this also has, and again, we also need to realize that um, we have these people who were quarantined in Accra also adding up to, to, this, to this number. But irrespective of that, we can vividly see that um, that indeed Greater Accra is uh, the so-called very hot spot if we look on the on the websites where the the spot map or the heat map has been has been displayed and of course it also raises a lot of concern but then once we know what is accelerating the these high numbers then we should also be able to put in the necessary mitigation uh, measures i don't know whether for some of the areas you mentioned Bawe and the likes whether they are a lot of them um, or they, they have large informal settlements for example whether they are slums whether people are not adhering to all the necessary measures we have been we have been recommending, so this definitely calls for a lot of um, concern. I can hear your dog barking, so I know. I'm sure we, we, it tells just tells me that I have to let you go. Go see to your dog, okay? And um, thank you so much. Okay, that's uh, Dr. Augustina Silverkin uh, is a researcher at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, also a lecturer and a virologist. And now, Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaje, has expressed worry the coronavirus pandemic is affecting other aspects of health care delivery. At a news conference in Accra, it is closed. Antenatal attendance has seen a decline, which connotes people are not visiting hospitals for fear of contracting the virus. Here's a report by Seloma Menya. At the last first quarter of our review, we have had immunization services coverage coming down you had growth promotion of children coming down, COVID coming down, antenatal and outpatient attendances are declining. If this goes on, it will have the sequential effect on the health outcomes in the end. The Director General of the Ghana Health Service mentions that beyond the coronavirus, other diseases including cerebrospinal meningitis and malaria have also claimed lives. It is worth noting that um, at the same period, we have recorded deaths from other diseases, such as 40 cases from CSM in one region, 54 uh, children have died from malaria at the same period. However, Ghana's case count remained unchanged from that of Monday, which stands at 2,719 positive cases, 294 recoveries and 18 deaths. Since the last um, update, we've had an increase of about 550 cases. 480 of these cases has come from 24 districts out of the 26 districts in Greater Accra. And they have come mainly from Tema, which presented about 169, Accra Metro 43, and Ashaman 41. The rest of the country presented 70 new cases. He announced that more than 200 persons are awaiting a second negative test to be declared recovered. Presidential advisor on health, Dr. Insiasari, maintains that the positivity rate of 2.0 and a mortality rate of 0.66 is due to the interventions laid down by government. Let's go on to some more stories. In the Western Region, Minister that's Kwabana Oche Dakomensa has revealed that the first batch of COVID-19 test results from the Veterinary Services Department Biosafety Level 3 Laboratory in the region are expected to be released tomorrow, that's May 6th. Meanwhile, the region's confirmed COVID-19 cases have jumped from 9 to 25. All confirmed cases are asymptomatic. The Veterinary Services Department's Biosafety Level 3 Laboratory on Monday received a first batch of 30 samples from the Public Health Reference Lab at the Afian Kwanta Regional Hospital. All samples were taken in the region. Western Regional Minister Kwabano Tredako Mensa in an interview with TV3 News revealed that the test results will be released Wednesday, May 6th. 
football will continue like this, we'll be ahead of the game. So we can test more and we can get the results more nicely it's quicker. He announced that the confirmed COVID-19 cases have moved from 9 to 25. Kwabena Otredako Mensa confirmed that the Sekendi Takwadi Metropolis leads in the case count. He noted that for the purposes of effective isolation and treatment, the region has been zoned into four. The regional minister added that apart from the hospitals, some secondary schools as well as hotels have been earmarked for isolation centers. I mean, if you take the numbers, currently 25, it means that we are virtually being asked to put like two people in one room, which is... We believe that is not the best way. So we have identified some hotels and public spaces already that we are going to put people in. The African Center for Health Policy Research and Analysis is calling on the Ministry of Health and the Ghana Health Service to, as a matter of urgency, put in place a national strategy in tackling the pandemic in Ghana. The organization, chaired by former Ridge Hospital Medical Director Dr. Thomas Anaba, is also asking government to, at all times, act on medical and scientific expert advice in relation to this pandemic. The center calls on governments, the Ministry of Health, the Ghana Health Service, to, as a matter of agency, put in place a national strategy in tackling the pandemic in Ghana available for everybody to see and track. It is not too late as the pandemic keep raging on in Ghana. We've seen the figures. The observations of the former medical director of the Ridge Hospital who criticized government's approach in the fight. Dr. Thomas Anaba reckons government has despite some good efforts largely failed as the numbers have exposed its bad decisions. Educating Ghanaians particularly in the rural areas, must be of special attention. The National Commission for Civic Education, the Information Service Department, which is, the very, which is in every region, must be resourced immediately to disseminate the needed information to help the fight and demystify their wrong beliefs about the pandemic. His recommendations are that government should relook the mode of testing, asking the Ministry of Health to be fully in charge of the coronavirus briefings. In the pandemic, a lot of money would have been saved and lives would have been saved. Thus, Oh, so, uh, a labor consultant, Seta Blosso, has asked the COVID-19 fund administrators to return the 50,000 Ghana cities donation made by the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, a SNIT, towards the COVID-19 fund. According to him, SNIT has no business doing so as they are not mandated under the pension law to make such donations and other payments that it und undertakes. Seth Abloso, who is also the director of Labor Policy International, said SNIT has been engaging in wrongful payments and should be called to order. It, it went to pay 500,000 Ghana cities to the COVID trust fund. It has no business doing that. I will ask the COVID administrators to return that payment to sender. If it has anything to pay, it should pay to members of the trust. In 2014, during the World Cup, uh, SNIT paid, if I recall correctly, one million CDs to the Black Stars. That is, that is wrong. He argued SNIT has no corporate social responsibility and should be urged by the Board of Trustees to desist from such practice. It's important for the members of the Board of Trustees in particular to, to recognize that what they are managing is not a trading company. There was a report, the SNED Director General saying that they had reduced, I think it was in 2019, they had reduced sponsorship. But what's the business of sponsorship? Again, the way they invest funds of SNED is questionable because we don't have maximum returns on these investments.
Welcome back to News 360 here on TV3. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook as well as DSTV Channel 279. Now, the Supreme Court has unanimously dismissed a suit filed by the Executive Director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Imano Kutin, who challenged government's decision to sign United States Ghana Military Cooperation Agreement. According to uh, the Supreme Court, they will, there's a seven member panel, reasons for the decision will be ready on May 20. In 2018, the executive director of the African Center for Security and Counterterrorism, Emmanuel Cotton, and the Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC, Roger Jemfi, filed a separate filed separate suits at the Supreme Court against the government, challenging the legality of United States of America Defense Cooperation Agreement with Ghana. Emmanuel Cotton wanted the Supreme Court to declare the agreement, which many Ghanaians, including some security experts, criticized as null and void. He challenged the basis on which Ghana's parliament ratified the agreement, which he argued was not executed between Ghana government and the U.S. government. Yabru Jajemfi of the NDC also filed a suit praying the court, among other things, set aside the agreement on the grounds that it was not in the national interest of Ghana and contravenes the 1992 constitution. Bruja Jemfi was also asking for a declaration that the word ratify used within the provisions of Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution is a term of art which has a true meaning of incorporating international law and treaties into the domestic legal system of the Republic of Ghana and not prior approval or approval. He further sought a declaration that the ratification by Parliament of the supposed agreement between Ghana and the Government of United States of America on Defense Cooperation, the status of United States forces, and access to and use of agreed facilities and areas in the Republic of Ghana on March 24, 2018, when the supposed agreement had not been executed by the president or person authorized by the president as provided for by Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution is contrary to the said Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution and same is now and void. The defendants in the matter were the Attorney General and Minister of Justice Gloria Kofu and the Minister of Defense Dominic Nitiwo. Following the ratification of the agreement, U.S. troops had the opportunity, among other things, be exempted from paying taxes on equipment that is brought to Ghana as well as use Ghana's radio spectrum for free. Let's stay a bit further on this. Reasons for this ruling will be made known by the seven-member panel on May 20. But Emmanuel Kuting is uh, one of the plaintiffs to one of the cases, actually two. Mr. Kuting, thank you for joining us via Skype. How do you react to this, this development? Well, thank you, Alfred, and thank you for having me, and good evening to your cherished viewers. I think the EPES court have spoken, and it brings a finality to the matter. But I think as a country, we have not been good students of public policy. We don't learn from uh, uh, our past. You realize that when this issue came up, it became a political banter. I was in court in the name of my organization, the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism, which is a policy think tank. And one other learned professor and uh, my brother, Brenya. Mm. But when we're asked to consolidate the seats, you realize that since we are independent, we would have been breaking the time-bound rule of consolidating our suit with a political player. So we withdrew our suit, same as the other learning professor. So if we're in court today, you realize that the judgment was passed in the name of Brenya and not me or the other contender. So you see, I will plead with political parties that as a country, let's do lesson drawing, especially if you look at the <coughs> developed countries, when it comes to matter of policy, the political parties come together. Right. If you recall the two get more detainees issue, it was a banter between True. MPP and DC. And okay. the government, uh, uh, the, the Ghanaian people were the losers, same as the US military agreement. So I must take emphatically that Last year, I withdrew my suit and I was not part of the classical suit as 
the judgment was delivered today in court. And that's very clear and emphatic there because I made that, that reference to the fact that you started a case uh, as yes. one of the plaintiffs in one of the cases challenging this particular decision. But yes, it's good that you add more flesh to that to that point. But I thank you for your time this evening. Uh, yeah, I, 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 let me quickly add this. You okay, briefly, in, in a minute, please. Um, I need to run. Yes, you realize that my my, I was unjustifiably disqualified as an MPP parliamentary candidate. Well, that's. Of I see. Hold on a bit for me. Hold on a bit for me. That's yes. that's that's another issue, which I'm sure we can get into on another day. But I, I, I right. do appreciate that 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 concern you have. But thank you so much. Imano Kuting is with the Africa Center for Counterterrorism, talking there. Business is news. News up next. A big party. Definitely, Alfred, business is news and it's time for the business news. My name is Nanekria Mensah Brampa. And let's begin now with happenings within the banking sector where First National Bank, uh, Ghana, has acquired 100% of GHL Bank. Effective May 5, GHL Bank will become a subsidiary of First National Bank, Ghana. Excerpts of messages sent to customers read the transaction has been approved by the regulators and the boards of the two banks. Management has advised its customers to continue doing business with First National Bank. Ghana Home Loans was incorporated as a mortgage finance institution in 2006 and obtained its banking license in June 2017 under the name GHL Bank Limited. Before its acquisition, it, in addition to the provision of mortgage loan products and services offered retail and corporate banking products as well as services to meet the needs of Ghanaians as well as companies. Let's look at happenings on the local commodity markets. Well, we understand that food prices on the market are expected to witness an upward adjustment and in this month of May. Well, according to the Ghana Commodity Index, consumers as well as traders are still not certain about the way forward for the fight against COVID-19. With the modification of how markets are set up in some areas following health protocols in the face of the pandemic, commodity prices continue to experience an upward adjustment. Local commodities such as cassava, yam, maize, gari, local rice and tomatoes all witnessed an increase in the month of April. A bag of cassava increased by 28.84% to close the month at 124 cities, 33 pesos, with tomato also making a gain of 24.18% per crate to close at 826 Ghana cities. Pona gained 22.11% to close at 814 cities, 69 pesos per 100 tubers. The average price of a bag of maize gained 18.11% to close at 164 cities, with cowpea also making a gain of 15.26% to close at 428 cities, 29 pesos per bag. Gary closed at 228 cities, 29 pesos, representing an increase of 13.66% in price. Local white rice gained 4.98% to close at 346.29 Ghana cities per bag. Wheat increased by 4.51% to close at 296 Ghana cities, 40 pesos per bag, with granite shelled gaining 3% to close at 549 cities, 71 pesos per bag. For the month of May, food prices are expected to go up due to uncertainty surrounding the pandemic. So definitely when you are visiting any of the markets on a market day, be it Wednesday or Saturday, you should add some more pesos or cities to your budget because prices will increase marginally at the various local markets. And talking about prices, money, well, the city to the other major trading currencies, I'm talking about the dollar, the euro, as well as the pound. It didn't see any change uh, in terms of its buying and selling prices. It remains stable across board. For the city to the dollar, you can still get it at five Ghana cities, 59 pesos, as it was trading same for Friday and Monday. It will be sold to you at five Ghana cities, 60 pesos. For the city to the great 
Great British Pound. It is being bought at six Ghana cities, 97 pesos, and same when it's being sold to you at the interbank market. Also for the CD to the euro is six Ghana CD, 0.7 pesos there, and it'll be sold to you same price. Well, for the banks, they increased their forex rates with regards to the dollar by some 1.54 percentage points there, but it remained unchanged for the euro as well as the pound. Definitely these figures will be a bit higher when you visit the forex market. You can log on to 3news.com for more business news updates. I'm Nane Kriya Mensa Brampa. We have sports with Fierinya next. Good evening. Hello, good evening, and it's time for us to bring you the latest in the world of sports. My name is Theo Yan, and thanks for joining me. Now, the Ghana Football Association is set to receive $500,000 from FIFA as the world governing body sets aside some of its funds to help member associations during the coronavirus pandemic. But there are proposals that the money should be spread among the Ghana Premier League clubs as they also battle survival in these times of inactivity. Here is a report on why that will not happen. The coronavirus has come with its baggage. One of them is how member associations of FIFA manage without the day-to-day -day activities that keep them running smoothly. There is a limited or no avenue to raise funds for the global operations of the federations. The GFA, like the many other member associations of FIFA, is awaiting their share of the global cake. But even before the arrival of the allotted $500,000, there is a debate over whether the local clubs should benefit from it. The GFA maintains FIFA attaches a strict policy on how to spend the money, which Henry Asantichum, the communications director, establishes. First of all, it's for financial engineering. Um, helps you to work on your books, your auditing and all that. Secondly, it's for operations, for domestic competitions. Thirdly, it comes in to aid your communication and your marketing drive. Here I'm talking about your websites, managing the websites, your IT and all that. And then, and then there is also um, 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 one for administrative cost. So that is why they are sending the money at this particular point in time. Some clubs will not back down on their pursuit of what they claim as theirs. Others, however, believe the FA is doing what is right. Albert Kome is Chief Executive Officer of Techiman 11 Wonders. The fact that we are members of association does not automatically con uh, grant, uh, guarantee us access to that money. If the money that is coming has specific instructions to it, we need to respect that. What we can only do is for them to look at it and see if there is any way for them to look at it as a third party. So for us, we need to be patient and we need to ask questions or research to know what type of money that is coming, if it comes. Customarily, FIFA's member associations would have only received the full amount of the contribution upon fulfillment of specific criteria according to FIFA's policy. Instead, the global governing body of football is now transferring this amount as active support to help safeguard football across all member associations. All right, so we are definitely keeping an eye on all the developments there and we'll be bringing them to you uh, subsequently. Now, one thing that has put this year into disarray is the coronavirus and sports has been one of the areas that has been hit hard. Now, leagues have been suspended, tournaments postponed, racing competitions rescheduled, among others. But the major one is the Olympic Games. Yafusulabi asked captain of the Team Ghana at the 2016 Olympics, John Ampoma, his take on it. This um, virus, you know, has uh, disrupted everybody's activity and schedules, uh, among other things. But um, right now, the most important thing is, you know, I'm staying safe and, you know, um, all facilities, training, facilities and gyms and other stuff um, has been closed down. So I'm doing like, you know, some free uh, body weight exercise like push-ups and sit-ups and, you know, um, any other activity that does not involve the use of weights or being outside or, you know, uh, those are the things that I'm doing right now uh, to make sure that, you know, I, I stay in shape a little bit and also uh, to be safe. Uh, from, from the virus. 
Now, now, John, I mean, um, as an athlete, I'm, I'm sure when the, the postponements, the news of the postponement of the Olympics came to, uh, it, it must have hurt you a bit. How did you take it? Well, I think, um, you know, yes, it, it, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate that, you know, uh, this, this uh, Olympics got cancelled. But the good thing is, you know, uh, we have another, another um, time to prepare. Uh, the postponement... Um, is going to give us, you know, uh, I haven't qualified yet, so it's going to give me like more time to prepare well. All right. Uh, on the other hand, we have other people that are also, you know, lose their jobs, people are dying and other stuff. So the situation that I am in right now is, is not, uh, as an athlete, it's not different from what others, uh, other individuals are going through. And I, I, I think, um, you know, Olympics is about friendship and, you know, uh, coming together and, you know, uh, uh, celebrating, you know, each other, culture, differences and other stuff. And All right, so on that particular note, we bring an end to the sports here on uh, News 360. My name is Thierry and thanks for watching. Let's do some entertainment news now. I'm Anita Ikea Kufu. And in entertainment tonight, from a medical laboratory scientist to a musician, Offer Music has taken off to a good start with Nigerian star Pato ranking. The singer bears it all in an interview with TV3 Entertainment. Versatile artist and medical laboratory scientist Derek Ofei Ewuku, popularly known as Ofei Music, is charting a new path in the music industry. The young singer has added a golden touch to the popular tune Befemano by legendary Ghanaian music group Blackstone, which was recorded over two decades ago featuring Paturanki. In the era where a lot of Baden artists sample songs of veterans without seeking permission, Ofei has opted to rewrite the story. The singer shared how he was able to do that successfully with Paturan King featuring. So I called Kawa Stone, that's the singer in the group. I told him I've sampled his song. He was like, no, you don't like that. The song is perfect. So I was like, I want you to listen to the song before you tell me what you think. He was like, okay, fine, I should send him the song. So I sent him the song without Paturan King's verse. And I sent him around 10. He didn't reply. So I was just there around 2 a.m. He, he texted me back, wow. And he called me, so I picked and I realized he was playing the song loud in his house, like he loves the song. He, they want to actually bless us with a verse. Like they wanted to remake the song, but they feel this is the perfect remake. As a musician, he believes the structures which should be put in place to effectively promote artists like himself are not working like they should. The structures are not there. It's very, very difficult. And if you are not involved in the whole politics behind the whole thing, it's like it's sects. If you are not, if you don't belong to this sect, of people like you don't get the deals you don't they will not play your song the santorini hit maker does not look forward to receiving royalties from ghana because of the poor structure of the music industry we will sit down and talk about royalties talk about all these things like yo, know, the artists should get their royalties and they, they they say all these big things but we don't see them do them i as an as an artist is not looking forward like to getting any royalties in ghana soon all my royalties i hope i'll get outside now, Stoneboy has incurred the wrath of Nigerians on social media after he made a statement that their acts have to come through Ghana before they can become famous. The Ghana-Nigeria rivalry appears not to be coming to an end anytime soon. The latest to have sparked a controversy is Stoneboy. The dancehall sensation courted attention for himself in Nigeria with a comment that has seen many coming at him. During an Instagram Live conversation with Tunde Balogun, a top Nigerian media personality, Stoneboy said Nigerians have to always pass through Ghana before they can make it cited Mr. Easy as an example. Nigerians always have to pass through Ghana. Why? You guys stop. There's always there's a blessing here that you guys just stop up and run with. You know, Mr. Uh, Easy had to blow here before he blew in his own. No, but no, oh, honestly, no disrespect. I love Mr. Easy. Maybe he blew in Ghana, but internationally, nobody knew him at that time until he came to Nigeria. He knows this. His comments made headlines on Nigerian blogs, attracting reaction from followers who were not excited about what he said. <laughs> Don't be 
That's it for entertainment. I'm Anita Ikuyokufuntana. As always, it's been an honor coming your way with the news here on TV3. And we're grateful to you out there for staying with us over the last 60 minutes. My name is Alfred Akonsi. I'm Aisha Yakubu. Good evening.